Hello and welcome back to Legends of the Dead. Two things before we get into this episode. The first one is, people have been saying I banished my court physician. I did not banish my court physician. He is still here. He is still in our court. His wife, on the other hand, is not welcome here. His wife is somewhere else and his wife will stay somewhere else due to being our rival. She is not allowed here. He is definitely allowed here. Now, you might be like, he's only good. Why is he still here? Well, you know, our other options aren't much better. In fact, our other options are significantly worse. So, he can stay for now. He's fine. We could, in theory, search for a new physician. We could get somebody better, but I think I'm okay with this guy right now. Another question that's been asked, which is tangentially related to court physicians, or it's not really a question that was asked, it was more a statement that was made, is that I'm basically not going for any of the plague buildings. I'm not going for any of the plague resistant stuff. I'm basically not interacting with plagues in any way, shape, or form. And yes, that is correct. Why? Um, basically because there's no reason to. Plagues have done nothing to us, basically. We had like a few people who were ill at the start, and now since then, almost nothing? I don't know. Like, basically we've had no plagues that have impacted us in a meaningful way. Now, is that always going to be the case? Probably not, but from my, uh, you know, experience here, plagues do nothing. Like, they, they barely even, like, they're just a pop-up. I don't know. Maybe they get dangerous at some point, and then I'll be like, ah, oh, I should have built all those plague buildings. But right now, it's like, you know, I don't really understand what we're meant to, we're not really meant to be worried about them. They're just very frequent pop-ups. I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a little odd. Um, I do know that at some point in the game there's meant to be like a mega plague that triggers and that could be interesting, however, you know, it's not now, so I don't really know what to do with that. So yeah, I'm not going to build buildings for things that don't really matter. That's my current, you know, policy on it. Right, now apparently I have three armies raised. Uh, yes, they are all over here, that's fine. We can merge them together, uh, they're actually at full supply. And then go and join this war. Wonderful. We can actually probably start by unseaging our land, which will help in the war and uh, generally be good for us. Is this not our land which is sieged? It is, but it's not worth war score. Okay, whatever. Uh, well, you know what I'll do? I'll send... Which one of you has got the siege unit? Yeah, I'll send you here. I'll send you here. And I'll send you here. Right, that seems good. It's also been pointed out that... Uh, where are we? Oh, yes, this guy is rubbish. It's because it replaced him without telling me. That's fine. Or it did tell me and I didn't pay attention. Uh, we can replace him with somebody good. We've got somebody with 40 learning. There we go. That's now only going to take six months. That's much better. Uh, can I replace you with somebody better? You're not a powerful vassal. I just want to see if we've got anyone better. We don't, in which case, you know, carry on, do your job. Uh, that's fine. Anyone else that we're worried about here? No. Another one that's been pointed out is that we can raise our men-at-arms uh, size. Uh, we probably should. When I, I did spot this previously, and I was like, we didn't have the money. We do kind of have the money now. How much does it cost? 45. 54. So I'm kind of, oh, that's 135 for those. 45, 54. So let's say that all of those are 50, because that kind of evens out. Uh, so I've got... 2, 4, 6, 8. 8, 10, 15, 20, 25. So that's 400 gold. Plus an extra 275 for them and an extra 275 for them. Which means that we are looking at an extra... 550. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't too hard. So, yeah. We're looking at 950. Well, we have the money. Let's, uh... Let, let's upgrade s some of these first. Yeah, let's upgrade these ones first and just see where we end up. That's fine. Yeah, and I think this is going to cost us 500. We'll save up, like, another couple hundred gold, then do it. Because, as we mentioned previously, having gold is one of the best ways to acquire more gold. So we want to kind of keep a little bit of reserve. Uh, just, you know, in case. Good. I also unpause the game. 
An evening's company. We are now friends with Grimma. Now, that was because she was just under voting for the person who we wanted her to vote for. Let's see how that looks now. So, we're looking for Finland. Finland, 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 Finland. Uh, Lithuania, wrong uh, queen. Jarmaland, wrong queen. Finland! There you go. So we got an extra 50, and now she's voting with our player air. Fantastic. Do we have anybody else who is on the edge? No. Uh, we're looking for anyone who has a minus... Oh, okay, we've got one. Got a couple, actually, here. Yeah, we're looking for people who are uh, minus, like, 20. Which is fine. How many votes do you get? You get five votes. Okay. Well, hold off for now, because she has a lot of votes here. She's very much the main person. Okay. What we're going to do next is we're just going to have a check of each of these other ones and see if there are any close votes. Like this one, not close. Lapland? Not close. Estonia? Uh, only person being voted for. This one is a little close. Is there anybody with high uh, numbers of votes? Oh, it's this guy. There is only one person. Okay. Uh, let's become friends with him. Okay. That seems good. We will befriend him, and then that will get him to vote on that one as well. Not that it matters too much, but, you know, it's it's nice. It's nice to just uh, keep that going. Now, having a lot of friends is good in a way, because it gets a lot of people to vote for you and all that sort of stuff. It's bad in another way, in that if they're all of a certain age and they die, it's going to make our character stressed. But, you know, there's not a lot we can do about that. Right. Make your way over here. Bellows are finished in Novgorod. Wonderful. Uh, so you're now fully made apart from the duchy building. We can't upgrade the castle. We can't upgrade the castle. Okay. Novgorod is done. I don't know why I felt the need to do a little tick there, but it is done. Next up, we do actually have one uh, plague resistance building. I suppose we could upgrade it. Uh, it is 0 0.2 tax, but actually we want to upgrade the forestry one. I didn't realize I hadn't upgraded forestry here. Okay. Let's just go through these a little bit. What are you doing? Libraries. Okay. Interesting. Um, what does a library do at a higher level? It's all about legend spread chance, huh? Okay. This one has the Grand Temple, which means that this holding gets a bonus. If we get something that multiplies tax, that would be very good here. I think farms and fields multiplies tax. Uh, yeah, you get some holding taxes. Not a lot, but like a little. And that could be good. Uh, so something that multiplies taxes by a little bit more than farms and fields. Cattle pastures? No, I don't think that one does. Nope. Okay. Um... Oh, holding taxes. Blacksmith. Yeah, that would do it. Also, does the trade port do it? No. Trade port gives you development growth, which is in of itself useful. But let's grab some uh, blacksmiths here. I think the holding tax is start, starting at 4% is good, and they see it scales up pretty high. It scales up all the way to 32%. So let's go for some blacksmiths here in this uh, castle. There we go. Wonderful. And then we'll hold off on spending any more money. Right. Uh, yeah, don't care. Right, I was just reading the message up there. Doesn't matter to us whatsoever. Okay. Hey, he's a novice physician. Wait, does that mean that he's actually good now? Or excellent? Yeah, there we go. Novice physician, physician makes him excellent. That's what we like to see. That is great. All right. Inheritance. You inherited the Kingdom of Lithuania from Queen Skuld in Scandinavian Elective. Uh... Queen Grimma, the warden of my kinswoman ear, has died without securing the Oster... Hamalinia succession. Ear is free to take her leave and rejoin her family. I also inherited an Irish sword and a couple of spears. I didn't know I had these hostages. Oh, you know what? I didn't have the hostages. She did. Oh, my lord. Okay. Um, so we now own Lithuania, which is cool, I guess. Okay. Um, it does increase our income quite significantly to directly hold it. So it said it was through Scandinavian elective we got this. That is not true. We got it via partition. Okay. Um, well, obviously, like, you know, number one, I'm at war, I can't add Scandinavian elective. 
We didn't get any extra land off of that, which is actually ideal, because we don't really want any extra land off of that. Uh, we got a bunch of artifacts. Let's just have a look. So we got a crown. First crown that we've got. 2% on um, parochial vassal tax contribution. It's an extra 0 0.1 tax there. Wonderful. Uh, we got Queen Skull's Burnished Mail. It is better. This is much better. An extra knight is huge. So we'll do that. Prized armor is now available to be given away. Our Pomeranian sword is slightly worse than the late Norse sword, actually. Yeah. So we'll go to the late Norse sword. Didn't have any regalia or anything. That's fine. Norse spear, I think we can give away. Let's just quickly have a look in here. We picked up a couple of new artifacts. You have to deal with artifacts immediately or they become a huge problem. So sort by acquisition date. Uh, Norse regalia. I don't think that's good enough. I think I'm just going to destroy that. Irish sword. Gives you three court grandeur and a bunch of prestige. Mm. Okay, I'm looking at what we have. So these two are obviously better. I think we get rid of this one. This is just objectively a worse version of the Irish sword. So yeah, let's destroy that. And then we'll put in the Irish sword. Cool. That seems good. Okay. That was relatively good for us. Right. Also, we now have enough money to uh, do this. Cool. And we still have a little bit left over. Okay. Uh, Norse Spear. And she and other stuff. Uh, let me have a look for player air. That's what I want to do. I can also unmark you now. So your bonuses are due to prize armor, and do you have a sword? I don't see a sword here. Yeah, we can give her the uh, sword. Right. So we're gonna gift her not the Norse spear. We're gonna gift her the Pomeranian sword. Right, which she should immediately use. Clear that. There we go. So now she has 35 prowess. You'll love to see it. Then in champions, we're just going to look for any champion that is underperforming. So champion or heir, I guess, who's an underperformer. So you're both fine. You're both a little bit low. Um, I think my nephew here, I'm just going to give him the two things. I'm going to gift him... I'll double check. Uh, he, he has a dagger already. Okay. Does he have armor? He does not have armor. Okay, we're going to gift him prize armor. Okay, so now he's at 32 prowess. Makes him look a lot better. Our husband, we're going to gift him the Norse spear. Assuming he doesn't already have his own. He doesn't. Wonderful. So, he now has the Norse spear and he's now at 27. Okay, so generally we've just increased prowess across our champions, across our air, and across ourselves. So that's good. Right. Back over here. Let's uh, do a little sieging. Who have we got in charge of this army? Uh, we're going to replace you with a siege leader. Just because that makes a lot more sense to me. Skjald for no longer a hostage, so she's now in our court. She is, however, frail. Can I marry her off to someone else? No. Wait, wait, wait a second. Oh, um, I just realized what we need to do here. No, I was thinking open and uh, re reload the screen, but I guess not. That's fine. You've converted the faith. Well done. Uh, we're now going to convert some of these old Ukanusko ones over here. Just because they should be really quick to convert. Wonderful. Um... What's next? Man payments. No, I think we're fine. Okay. Chill. Let's win let's win this war and then we can work out what we're doing next. You promoted culture. Great. So that was the last of the um, Estonian culture taken. Let's maybe convert this Finnish holding now. There we go. It's gonna take four years. That's not too bad. Okay. More people are returning home and are no longer hostages. Our friend has died. I told you it was going to start being problems. But, or there was going to start... We were going to start having problems from that. Okay, that's fine. Hooks will expire. I'm not worried about them whatsoever. Where are we? Oh yeah, back over here. 
Hey, we got some more score. Nice. We got some war score back, I should say. Uh, they have taken war score because they control Uzen. Okay, we're going to merge over here. And then we're going to go to war. Um, another person died of a fatal ap apoplexy. Okay. Early can have our position on the council. That seems good to me. We need to designate a guardian for my granddaughter. So she has the wild oats uh, trait, so she was born out of wedlock. But other than that, it's not terrible. Okay. Let's do intrigue. Seeing what we're uh, looking at here in terms of, uh, you know, educational traits. Yeah. My daughter Driffa can educate her. Right. Um, yeah, we'll do some merging up. And then we'll figure out what we're doing with our new vassals. Okay, schemes at court. Uh, this guy has returned from his education under High Shaman Erdsville. Okay, but we don't really care. So, I mean, sure, whatever. Not a huge deal to me. I'm guessing that some of these events that we're getting are due to the land that we just inherited. Like, we're getting information about it. Or about things that would have been relevant to her. Befriend! We are now befriended this dude. And that now means that our, um, where are we? That means that this election is now very secure. She has all the votes. What we like to see. Okay. I said she just go through here and just go, who doesn't have, you know, when doesn't she have the votes? So she doesn't have the vote for this person. But I guess also what we're looking for is votes that are close as well. Yeah, so for anyone who is close to voting in another direction. So you, you got 15 votes. You're voting against her. However, you would vote with us if you were our friend. So let's, uh, yeah, let's befriend you. Wonderful. Right. And now here and into uh, the other armies. So we like to see they're going to do their siege, which is great. Cousin, uh, cousin was taken prisoner. Not worried about that. I'm going to keep chasing them into this land. Hopefully these guys don't break the siege to join us. Because that's the war goal. I would love it if they finish their... Yeah, they finish their siege. Perfect. Great timing. That means that this battle is probably going to give us enough battle war score to win the war. Uh, we need a guardian for our grandson, Care. He is a genius. Alright, well. Immediately, we go into... Could be an... A an air territory. We go, you're going to be the person to educate him. We're going to have our brave champion educate him. In Marshall. Okay, I think that's fine. That seems good to me. Right. We have defeated their army, wiping them out, gaining money. We wiped out the next army as well. Only gained three gold for that one. 100% war score. Anything we want to do with the prisoners? Uh, we'll get our 15 gold for you. You're not good enough. You're really high marshal, but you're not good enough. And you... You're almost good enough, but not quite. Uh, I'll just gain a weak hook. Oh my god. No, you're the person who's been in for a while. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. You're the annoying one. Right, back to our territory. So, okay, war is over. Wonderful. So, yeah, that little bit of land is now their land. They love us for joining their war. Great, disband. Okay, so, number one. Thing we want to do is we're going to take Lithuania here. We're going to make it Scandinavian elective. Done. Done. We are going to vote for Gurley, my player heir. And everyone else can vote for whoever they want to vote for, which is probably going to be Gurley. Wonderful. Let's just let that go through. Is that the case? Are they voting for her? Uh, they are. Okay. Cool. Right. What is next on our plan list? What, what do we need to do? Um... I guess what I want to do is sort out our vassals in here. I think that's my first plan, while we have an opportunity. 
And by that, I mean sort out what they're paying. So, uh, what we're looking for is this little uh, triangle here. And we're just going to go down, and anyone who doesn't have a triangle, we're just going to click, see what the tax, see what taxes they're paying. Okay. So you're fine. You're paying extortion. I say, I guess we can just see what, what they're paying. And if they're not paying extortion, we want to have a look. So yeah, we'd love you to pay extortionate taxes. Uh, what are we going to give you for this? I will give you low feudal levies. I don't think feudal levies... Oh, you've already modified yours. We're looking for ones that don't have the triangle, obviously. Yeah. Right, Bjarma land. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go low here. That makes it not an act of tyranny, which is lovely. Modify vassal contract. You're still tribal. Okay, that's fine. Also, your nickname is the Hairy. Very good. Uh, you. High sanctioned war declaration. So we've done some of these before. But. Uh, just see if we had anything in here. No, we're not giving them religious rights. That's fine. I saw there was a new option. I was just trying to figure out what it was. Uh, that's fine. We're just going to do this. And this is just going to very quickly increase the amount of money that we have. Extortionate. Uh, extortionate low. Oh, yours has already been changed. I thought it hadn't been for some reason. As I was looking at the wrong part. Yours, extortionate low. There we go. We don't care how many troops these guys are giving us. Because the less troops they give us, it doesn't really... Like, that's not where the strength of our army comes from. The strength of our army comes from our knights and from our men-at-arms. Levies are nice to have. But we would much prefer the money to fund the knights and the men-at-arms. Right? That makes a lot more sense for us. Okay, extortion at low. Although I probably should consider March at some point. Um, and the reason why we should consider some being marches is probably if we want our vassals to expand at the edge of our territory. We would make them marches and then they would um, pay us less, but they would get a levy size increase. So potentially good. Oh, um, sanction war declaration. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You're perfectly all right. Extortionate. You high sanctioned war declaration. Yours is already extortionate. Yours extortionate low. Okay. We're not de jure your liege, but that's okay. We'll still take whatever money we can get out of you. Extortionate low. Uh, that's fine. We're going extortionate low again. Extortion at low. It's earning as much money as possible off of these ones. We have a lot more vassals to do these with. Actually, I can go up to the feudal levies, uh, sanctioned war declarations there, which is quite nice. Uh, but yeah, we have a lot more vassals to do this with as we have all of Lithuania's vassals directly as our vassal, which is why it makes sense to do this now, because if we did at some point decide to give away Lithuania, all of those vassals keep their vassal contract with the new liege, meaning that that new liege has more money, which means that they will be paying us more money, which is great. So yeah, now we're making 22 a month, which is uh, very, very good. Right, uh, next on our list of things to do. What do we need to do next? So we sorted out that. Uh, I guess we should have a look at the courtiers, because we got some new ones. Uh, I don't have anyone else who's in my prison, no, just that one guy. Okay. So, what we're looking for is adults, uh, we don't care about dynasty, who are unmarried. There we go, because we should have some people now, and yes, now we can marry them off. These aren't necessarily people I care about, but they are members of my dynasty. Uh, so you, we're going to go uh, marry you off to this guy. Sure, you can be a secondary spouse. Seems absolutely fine to me, no issues there. Be on. Next, you. Again, not really any reason to keep her in court. Unmatrilineal. Go find somebody who is a ruler and simply send her off. That's fine. Next, you. You're just a guest. This guy is a champion. Oh, but we don't want him to... Uh, yeah, we don't want to pass on stuttering, so we'll leave that there. You are a giant. We could potentially find you another giant. Giant. Uh, you shall marry this person. 
That seems reasonable. Yep, okay, guarantees giant will be passed on. Okay, and then you are just some random. All right, and these are guests that we can't do anything to, I believe, for both of them. Yeah, okay. Do we have any other guests in our court? Just out of curiosity, we have a competent fighter. I would like you to leave. Oh, you have an inspiration? What's your inspiration? Uh, inspiration. You are merely decent. No, we would like you to leave. Be gone. Right. Anyone else? No. These are just random people that I can't even recruit, so that's fine. Uh, oh no, we do have some more guests. We have Tosta here. Dismiss. We have you. Uh, also dismiss. I don't need claims. If I want to go to war, I can go to war. We have you. Also dismiss. There we go. I'll clean out our uh, guest list a little bit here. Might allow some more guests to come and join us. That'll be fine. Right. Uh, so we'll wait a second for these to go through. Okay. Perfect. So our list is now a lot smaller. And then just because we saw it pop up, we then want to go children. All. Sort by age. And just do a little check of any children above the age of six. And make sure that they have guardians. Which they should do, but you know. Aha! I knew we saw at least one new one. So what are you doing? You're doing a learning education. Oh, I don't need this to be sorted by genius. It's fine. Uh, you'll do. Wonderful. Right, that seems good to me. Anything else to do there? No. Two people I can potentially pardon. You. Are you part of the list of everyone else? Uh, who has dynastic kinslayer? I think you are. Uh, lots of your family, like, randomly died. I don't think that's what it's talking about here, though. Yeah, it looks like you imprisoned somebody. It's probably somebody died in her prison. Alright, I'm gonna, like... I'm probably just gonna pardon you. Yeah. And then you? Why, why can we imprison you? You're a murderer, dynastic kinslayer? Is it the same thing as it always is? Uh... Kind of seems like it might be. I can't actually see it again in here. So, yeah, you know what? I'm going to pardon you. That's fine. Right. All of that seems good. Um, I think we're just all, we're just going to start building then. Don't need to upgrade the library anymore here. So this is Osil. So we could get holding taxes, but again, they only apply to the holding. But they do give us night effectiveness. Trade ports are nice for the development growth, though. That does that is quite nice. Let's grab a trade port. Yeah. Here, uh, you're maxed out in forestry. All three of you are maxed out in forestry. I kind of want to go for either trade ports or blacksmiths. Do they all have access to trade ports? I'm assuming not, because I'm assuming they have to be one of the ones that's actually on the coast. Yeah, so the one that's on the coast, you can definitely have a trade port. That's fine, because it's our capital. This one cannot have a trade port, so let's get a blacksmith's. And then this one, again, probably can't have a trade port. No, so let's get a blacksmith. So we're getting holding taxes and night effectiveness. So this holding is going to start stacking bonuses. Uh, like, a lot of these are only to holding taxes here, which doesn't matter too much. But the holder of this holder, uh, the holder of this holding gaining night effectiveness is very good. And then the county gaining levy reinforcement rate is very good. So, yeah, we're happy about that. Okay, um, let's unpause. Let's let the game run a little bit. I think this is fine. We finished um, something in Osel. Ah, so we finished the first level of blacksmiths. Let's get the second level of blacksmiths here. Okay. Child of my dynasty, Saga. Another granddaughter who's a genius. Fantastic. Oh, this is the third child of Gurley who's a genius. That is incredible. It Basically, one of those three is going to be our next heir. Most likely. You have converted a piece of land up here. Great. Uh, convert the next piece of land. It's only 12 months per piece of land, so that's fine. Okay. Spouse, acting on my behalf. 
My husband spends a significant amount of time traveling the realm with his honor guard. There are many matters which he can settle on my behalf, and the military presence Emperor Guthrithur brings with him is a firm reminder of my right to rule. I'm gonna gain dread? Yeah, let's gain some dread. So 80 dread, that's good. New acquisitions. During the daily management of my realm, I have learned of several different opportunities I can pursue. Each opportunity has great potential, but realistically I can only pursue one of them. I must determine what would ultimately give me the most value. We'll look for a lost tome and gain a very good book artifact. Gain a favor hook on her or 500 gold. Let's get a book artifact. What do we get? We get we got a uh, late Norse making gold, a court artifact that gives monthly stewardship lifestyle experience. Okay. Knowledge within grasp. Princess Ear and I have uh, little in common, which has made it difficult to communicate with her. However, with some effort, I could teach myself uh, enough to carry a conversation with proper court etiquette and tradition. Um, we can get studying interest for scheme power and diplomatic study, which gets us diplomacy, or I could relax. Yeah, let's do that. Fantastic. Okay, a uh, new book is in here. Okay, what are my current books? Uh, health boost and learning. Ooh, Diplomacy Martial Renown. So I could get rid of the health boost, I suppose. Or I can destroy this and, um, yeah, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Cool. It may be worth going to war again just to earn some money or just to do something, right? We're kind of just at peace right now. Could head in here and take a little bit of land off of these guys, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, have I got any... Does this tell me what my reasons to declare war are? No. Mm. I was kind of hoping that I could see a list of what I can declare war for and if there was anything that wasn't land, but... That's okay. Um, what's happening down here? Are you in some kind of civil war? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, we could potentially attack uh, Bashkiria here and try and take a little bit of land off them. We try and take some land off of uh, Yugra, who are allied with Kurgan, who's below them. But that's all. Oh, there's no border. That was what I. Yeah, previously we'd already worked out there was no border. So yeah, I could take some land off of them. Maybe try and take their capital away from them. That'd be interesting. Again, the reasons why we might want to attack over here are potentially to increase our diplomatic range to cover like more of the world, which potentially gives us more options. But beyond that, I guess we could do a thing. We could do another grand tour. It involves saving up a little bit. But it might be worth doing. Hmm. Yeah, potentially. Anything in here I could do? Uh, we do have recruits for a specialist. I guess I should just do this when we have it available. Yeah, that's one I should just do, because this one allows us to just get people of the forest fighter trait in as a high martial commander. So if they're not good, I can just marry them off somewhere. Uh, order mass eviction. Get every uh, guest to leave our court. Hmm. Interesting. Um, that's probably something we want to do, like recruit all the guests that we can and just fire them via this one instead of firing them individually. That makes more sense. Yeah. We could also invite champions and claimants to our court and just, um, like, cycle through them if we wanted to at some point. Hmm. Might be worth it. Don't need to remove any stress. I'm just seeing what our options are here. What do we need for strength and bloodline, by the way? Ah, you need to have, um, a trait from, like, the top of the group. Yeah, and then, yeah, okay. And then have genius, beautiful Amazonian. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. So you just need to have a positive um, trait like that. So if we do get a genius to inherit at some point, then we'll be able to do this. Okay. Well, that makes sense then. Because that, that seems like that would be pretty good. Um, but yeah, we're not quite there yet. Okay. Uh, let's do a forest specialist. I know it's costing like the last of our money, but let's get one. Carl Havi. You're not really that good. I'm going to marry you off to someone outside our court. I know, immediately I'm like, yeah, not good enough. Oh, yeah, not just giants. We can possibly, uh, marry him off to somebody else. Apparently it's only my courtiers who are being considered. How about all? 
Wow, really? That's the only people who would ever marry this person? I'm gonna have to ask him to leave my court politely. Okay, or did I do the wrong option? I might have done the wrong option. Thank you for the renown. I did the wrong option. It's a fine spouse, I did arrange marriage, which only chooses people from your court. That makes a lot of sense. Looking for the first one of these people who are actually in a court, and then we'll simply matrilineally marry you off. Okay. We spent 400 and, oh, sorry, 140 gold to uh, create somebody and then marry him outside of our court. Your neighbor has lost in a holy war for this county. All right, well, we've expanded into this county. All right, then. Again, we have kind of left this side alone. I think I've said this before, but um, yeah, they, they have fallen apart. Like, I don't know. I don't know why they've fallen apart. Maybe it's because, okay. I'm trying to think of logic. Obviously, there's some randomness in here, but logically, why would they have fallen apart? I think, potentially, one, we raided them, which we may have defeated an army or two, which may have affected it. But I think what really affected it is that we weakened uh, Sweden, right? We re weakened Sweden and what would be Norway. So by weakening them, we caused uh, the um, people who were on the British Isles to be stronger, which then meant that they were more of a threat to these people as they were getting larger, which you could see when England spread over here and Ireland is still spread over here, which meant that they didn't blob out as much as they usually do, which then meant that other people could encroach in on their lands, like Carpathia, I guess, was the main one coming over here when it had its big empire. It's now fallen apart. They, these guys have now faced a threat, so they've now fallen apart, and now everything's just kind of chaos in here. Honestly, I have no answer for the Byzantines. I guess they maybe didn't do well with the... Carpathians there, but I think honestly the Byzantines just fell apart by themselves, but anyway um, Also, the Arabian Empire hasn't really stayed together. It could just be that the, in this patch um, nations don't really um, Stay together very long. I don't know Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this patch breaks them up Maybe plagues are a lot worse for the AI than they are for the player. That's the other option I have A granddaughter who isn't a genius. What's up with that? Do I want to be friends with uh, the Kana Kimmich? No, not really. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have anything against him. I just don't really want to be friends with the Kana Kimmich. I can modify your contract because I have a hook. All right, you don't have a sanctioned war declaration. All right, cool. Witchery and salvation. What commotion is this? A crowd led by the baying voice of Hrothgir is circling some unfortunate soul. Pushing through, I finally discover Hrothnuthur defiantly defending himself, even as Hrothgir's voice rings out even louder. And furthermore, the moment you stepped outside to gather plants for your so-called craft, the cursed Sinopian pox started ravaging our lands. You are clearly the cause, your abhorrent ogre. Hrothnuthur jabs a finger and fires back as the crowd mutters angrily. This is quickly getting out of hand. You can say they're a witch. Let's think this through. Cease your uh, baseless accusations or perhaps if he promises to give up the um, craft. Um, I'm going to say let's think this through. crowd ignored me and he became a witch but that's all that happened and being a witch is not actually illegal in our lands. Okay, hold court. Rivals in agreement. Okay, we have Jarl Sif and Duchess Freydis. Um, okay. My lord, we have to tell you that many in your realm are intensely dissatisfied with the current tax regime. They find it to be unjustifiably extortionate. Uh, I can say, if you look at it another way and try and convince them. I'm not your enemy, she is. Get them to argue against each other. Perhaps you'd like to back those words up with steel. Yeah, that seems like a healthy way of government. Hey, you you think the taxes are too high? Well, I can beat you with a sword. Well, whatever. I beat them with a sword. Legend Cooptation. It has been a while since I arrived at your court. I have carefully observed how you rule and address realm matters, both small and grandiose, and I have been nothing but deeply impressed. 
Among the Vespians, there is an old tale of a legendary ruler from a distinguished dynasty. It's a story my mother told me when she was young. She heard it first when her mother, from her mother, oh so long ago. And now I have the great pleasure of telling uh, you that I think that you are the legendary Empress of Vespo Legends. Okay, I believe any true son, uh, son of Vespian would surely agree with me. So I can gain a mighty endeavor for Oster Legend Seed. Okay, get some cultural acceptance. Gartheriki is the subject of Vesper Tales and get great deed for the Empire. Or I do not care. I think we've done a mighty ende endeavor, haven't we? Uh, we have done a mighty endeavor. Let's get the other one. Sure, why not? This might be time to pick up a new legend. Right, uh, let's do it. Public accusation. My lady, I'm sure someone in the Empire is trying to harm my liege. I have no evidence, but I suspect you're all Sif. She, uh, she wants no competitors in her claim to the county of Lofoter. What, what is a county of Lofoter? Including Countess Astrether's own. I beg you, imprison Sif. I don't care. <laughs> it's so beneath my level that it's just not worthy of me even looking at it. Okay, what do we get for... Oh, a great deed. Uh, we get nothing because I need 300 gold to even look at it. Why do you need a set amount of gold to even look at the legends? That's a great question. I don't have an answer for you. Uh, I'm just seeing. Do we have any like bonuses from being above? Yeah, we get a little bit of a bonus for being above our expected level. Not a huge bonus, but sure. That's fine. Um... I have received the most disturbing news. My worthless rival, Zikni, has been spreading false rumors to me to Ur, claiming that my desire to earn her trust is nothing but a cynical attempt to exploit her. I mean, that's true, but like, you know, I don't care. Um, keep going. Do we really need to have the money to look at this? Yup. Alright then. Uh, new stewardship perk. We finished something in Hyuma. Oh, I think that's the first rank of the blacksmith, right? Yeah, wonderful. We have no Republican vassals and we have no stress. So both of these are bad. I'm just gonna, well, I guess I can take professional workforce, increase our build, or decrease our building construction time. That seems good given I'm building right now. My sister is imprisoned. She was at one point my heir, but now she's imprisoned. I should pay the ransom for my sister. That's an interesting um, point of view. How much does this cost me? 38? Yeah, I'll just gain an extra 50 here. It's fine. How much do I need to look at this now? Another 210. Alright, we're getting there. Yeah, she just got let out of prison without us having to do anything. That's absolutely fine. Uh, we need a guardian for my grandson. He is a genius. Wonderful. You shall be educated by a genius. This genius shall be... Rolfer. Done. Okay. Uh, you're going to do a stewardship education out of those two. Because you could potentially be our heir. Okay. Don't want to stop being rivals with Duchess Ingrither. Sure. Seems good. I'm now friends with um, Princess Ir. So that is for the Kingdom of Lithuania. Wonderful. So she's now voting our way. Anyone else? We can get this person to vote there. There's only two votes on it, but sure, let's befriend you as well. Right. Carry on. Hey, a bunch of these things are finishing. I do gain a stress level, but we're going to take this top one here, which gives us Confider. It's great. We lose our stress, but we also gain Confider, which increases the stress loss, which is great, and gives us Diplomacy. It's actually just a fantastic trait to have. Uh, because I want to earn money a little bit quicker, what I'm actually going to do now is I'm immediately going to talk to my confidant, which is going to lower all courtiers' opinion of me except the confidant, uh, except the confidant, which lowers my stress by 37. And then I'm going to work off my stress. Heavier is more. That's not enough, I think, to myself as I put down the training sword. I've been practicing non-stop, but I'm still not getting tired. I need some, a tougher challenge, something bigger, perhaps heavier, something sure to tire me out. Uh, there's no need for extra improvement. What there is need for is me going in here and demanding a few extra payments. 
like an extra 50 from you. And an extra 50 from you. Wonderful. So, how close are we now? Should be very close. We're, we're merely 32 gold away. Right, that's fine. Wait a little bit. Keen as a blade's edge. Ah, we've had this event before, but this allows our heir to gain aspiring blade master because she did not have it. She now has 42 prowess. Wonderful. All right, one more month. One more month. Factions are being created against us. We don't have a ton. We only have two factions, so let's not worry about it. You've converted faith. Great. Uh, you are going to convert faith. Uh, there. There we go. That's fine. Uh, also, let's just, just have a little check-in. So yeah, our culture is spread a little bit up here, actually, since last time we saw it, but it doesn't spread a huge amount. Our faith is fairly secure, apart from the bits that converted with the heresy last time and the little bit of the land we haven't converted yet. And actually, some of this isn't even our territory. Some of this is actually Mordvinia's territory. Okay, what does this give us? Oh, first of all, let's do the first bit. So, Diplomacy per level of fame is the owner modifier. You get Marshal on the promoter. And the lands get Station Men at Arms da Damage and Popular Opinion. Okay, so you get Legendary Statue. Launch Legendary Adventure. Commission Legendary Artifact. Demand Local Submission. So, we've had this one before. Yeah, this is the same as a new High King. Okay. So, oh, and the symbol is the same. Oh, the symbol is the same. So actually, a mighty endeavor might have been better because we could have grabbed another um, kingdom into our du jour. Interesting. Okay, I think I see how I'm going to interact with this system now. I think that what we want to do is we want to learn what the types of legend are. And when we want an effect from the legend, we, have, we interact with the system. Otherwise, we leave it alone. Okay, I think I understand. Although I should have a court chronicler trying to find new legend seeds for us. What does this one give us? So we get the legendary shrine. Evangelize to the realm, immediately converting vast swaths of the realm to your faith. Okay, doesn't really matter. That's pretty easy to do. And a major ho uh, holy Cassus belly. Okay. Yeah, and the legendary shrine is fine. Okay. I mean, being able to convert... Mass wolves of our, our, your realm is good, but you kind of want to have that like sitting almost done. Do a, a war to take a ton of land and then trigger this, right? So you, this is kind of one that you want to have sitting there. You want to declare like maybe even a couple of holy wars in a row. Or maybe even a holy war, reassert the holy mission decision, give you another holy war, take two kingdoms at once then evangelize to convert all of that land. Okay, yeah, cool. We'll leave that alone for now. Uh, we should have a court chronicler though. Let's put in this guy for now. And you can search for legends. Wonderful. Right, well, that seems like a good point to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.